Okay, this is Friday night. Austin's driving his car over to my house so we can do some transmission swapping. He did talk during this video, but the car is too loud. You can't hear nothing that he says. But yeah, it's about a 20, 30 minute drive and it'll hold third gear until you give it any power. And then when you give it any any gas, start making power, then it just starts slipping. But he was able to limp it over here. All right, so today Austin's coming over and we're gonna take the uh, transmission out of this thing and put that turbo 400 in there. Then we're gonna take this transmission and put it in Austin's. So I already took out the cross member bolts. I've got a video doing this already, I think. But yeah, there's two bolts that go up in here, up through the top. I took those out on both sides. I took the middle cross member bolt out. Right there. And then I took the uh, shifter linkage off. Just took it off from there and took it off from the linkage because we're going to need the linkage on Christopher's car um, transmission. And uh, I took out the cork converter bolts. There's three of them. I used a <coughs> a tire iron stuck up in there and turned it around so I could get to one unloosened it Stuck the tire iron up in there turned it around etc That's the uh, tire iron I use right beside that light there Now I'm gonna go back here and take his drive shaft out shaft out. There's four bolts um, They hold two you you little clamp things then we can take the drive shaft out and sometimes fluid comes out of there so I got me a, a little catch can there and then I'm gonna jack the transmission up I'm gonna pull the cross member out it's gonna drop down and that'll get me to my cooler lines I'll take the cooler lines off <clears throat> once I get those off the jack's still up in there and then I'll start taking the uh, bell housing bolts out there's six of them, three on this side, three on that side, and we can drop her down. And uh, I don't know why they put ears on these transmissions, but these ears make it hard to get past the headers. So, and uh, I'm pretty sure we're going to have to cut those off to fit it in Austin's car anyway. So we, we are going to cut those off when we get it out of there. But this transmission is going to go in Austin's car. And Austin said he was he drove his car over here last night. Austin said he's gonna be here at eight, but apparently his eight o'clock's a little bit different than mine because it's almost nine o'clock. He still ain't here. But we'll go ahead and get it ready to pull out. I got the drive shaft out and I'm about to drop the cross member. Be real careful. Depending like when we had the HCI on this thing, when we dropped it, it, it pulls the motor down in the back make sure you don't hit your distributor on the firewall and bust it you'd be buying a new cap but yeah you got the drive shaft out i'm gonna put the jack under there jack it up pull the cross member out let it dangle and take the transmission cooler lines off hey look who made it austin's here oh my god it's only about an hour and ten minutes late Bull butter. I said 8.30. I'm up there. I, you said 8. Oh, well, you said you, you said got eight. You said you got up at 8. <laughs> anyway, yeah. He had to go get his phone charger. Now we're going to pull this thing out here. All right, we'll set this one back down on the ground. We got the transmission up in there. And then realize the dipstick tube is too short. It, it likes about a, what? quarter of an inch going down the hole I tried to bend it a little to get it to go all the way down but it was not working hey or if we could bend the tab well no I don't think that's gonna work plus we need the transmission mount the other one's not gonna fit and then and then we put the 1350 yoke in there it's 1350 right or whatever and the yoke in the rear end because Christopher's gonna get a big beefy drive shaft and I did some measurements. I measured from the yoke to the back of the transmission itself, the tail housing. 
and then uh, I measured how far the output shaft sticks out of the tail housing and that's the only two measurements you need if you're getting a full drive shaft with the with the, the yoke that goes in the transmission and everything but yeah we're gonna push this one out of the way we're gonna put the hood on it roll the windows up push it out of the way put the cover on it and pull uh, Austin's in and yank his 4L60E out and put that uh, put Chris's turbo 350 in it all right, we pushed the Trans Am over here, covered it up. The transmission's in there, but there's only two bolts in it. We need a different dipstick and a different transmission mount, and that one needs a drive shaft. That car actually rolled really good. It rolls better than mine. We pulled. <laughs> Was you doing all the pushing? I wasn't pushing that hard. Austin pulled his in. I got mine over here running it through a heat cycle. Woo, woo. It's because it ain't been started in a while. But we're going to put this one up in there and yank the transmission out of it. Put a different flex plate on it. Now on these flex plates, you got a turbo 400 volt pattern. You got a turbo 350 bolt pattern, which is the same as the uh, the uh, 700 R4, which is uh, the same as the uh, 4L60E up until 98. In 98, the, the bolt pattern changed um, on the 4L60E. So 98 up, 4L60E, it's got its own bolt pattern. Uh, 4L80E and turbo 400, they share the same bolt pattern. And I'm talking about the torque converter to the flex plate. And then uh, turbo 350, 700 R4, and uh, 97, and later um, share share the same bolt pattern. Now a lot of torque converters they'll come with dual turbo 400 or turbo 350. This one does not. It's just made for a turbo 350. So we got this concave flex plate that's going to line up with the turbo 350 because. Generally, this is the 98 up 4L60E uh, flex plate, and it's not the same bolt pattern. And then there's a, a spacer that goes in here to line up, line up that part to this, because uh, typically that would go up in the back of the crank, and it's not going to do that on this because how much different it is. So you use that spacer that'll go up inside there. But yeah, we're gonna get this one up in the air and start ripping the transmission out of it. And I hate taking the transmission out of these because the middle transmission bolt on this side is a pain in the butt to get to. And when you do this swap, you only use five bolts rather than the six you're supposed to use. So we're gonna have to use that bolt. We're about to use that bolt hole. But yeah. This thing about to get a turbo 350. 350. And up up it goes. Got Austin working on it now. Yeah, we just use these wool cradles. And then the back we put them on jack stands because it just makes it easier to take the drive shaft out when you put it on jack stands on the rear end. But I got those cradles for the front and back. But, like I said, since we want to turn the trans or the rear end to be able to get the drive shaft out, we, uh... I got a jack stand back there. That jack stand lob would kick over, man. That'd be all right. I know. It falls, it falls in the back. I ain't gonna nothing. Jacking these cars up this high, though, is a little sketchy. Christopher's car is harder because it's. I was supposed to measure his travel when we took that down. Dang it. Yeah, it's pulling the whole car. Why is the jack not moving? It's pulling the whole cradle and everything. I don't know why it's not rolling. 
we might have to jack it up and reposition that one over there. Mm -hmm. well, it's trying to pull it off of it. All right, let me get this under here. All right, here we are taking a 4L60E out. Yeah, that's job. Austin's hard at it. <coughs> I took the transmission lines loose. Well, not really, not yet. I forgot to get the screwdriver wise up. <laughs> but anyway, all right, so first thing we did was took the drive shaft off. Then we took the cross member out. There's just two bolts on this side, two bolts on that side, and then one in the middle on the transmission. So we'll take that out. And then the transmission lowered down. Once the transmission lowered down, see that very top bolt? I can't get my big fat body in here. You have to take that, that bolt loose. There's a nut on the other side. Give me that bracket. What bracket? For the torque line. Oh. Once you take that bolt loose, and, and you can't get to it while the transmission's up in the air, um, this bracket holds the torque arm, and it just it pivots down on this bottom piece, and then you can pull it out. And then the torque arm go up there. Once you get the torque arm off, we took the uh, shifter linkage off. You unplug the, uh, the connector for the computer. And then you got your wheel speed, or you got your speed sensor right here. Unplug that. Those are both right here, just hanging out. And then uh, on these lines right here, seeing it, it helps to get to the lines too while you got it down like that. You got these little clips. And the best thing I found to get these off is a dental pick. You can buy dem dental picks at Harbor Freight. And once you pop those out of this, there's a groove up in that that bolt that screws in the transmission. It'll be in that groove. You just pry that out, and they'll fly everywhere. Try not to lose them. If not, you can get them at the parts store. Once you get those loose, you can pull them out. Well, his aren't pulling out easy. I meant to get a big, long screwdriver so I can pry on it a little bit while it's up. But I forgot to grab it. Now, the transmission bolts on these, it's way different than a small block Chevy Gen 1, Gen 2. You got two bolts at the very bottom. They go into the actual oil pan. <laughs> then you got two on this side, about halfway up. Two on the side right there. Then on the other side, you got these three on the other side, plus you got one a little bit further up and then you got one at the very top middle and I'm not even sure how you're gonna get the torque converter bolts out of there how do you get the torque converter bolts out I don't even know how you get the torque converter bolts out of this thing I've never worked on one of these we're just winging it guys I don't know. <coughs> I know when we put the Turbo 350 in, we're only going to use five bolts. <coughs> but we got to take the flex plate and everything off this one. I don't even know how to get the torque converter bolts out. I didn't think about that. I didn't think about that now until I saw this big solid thing on the bottom here. I don't know. We're going to do some research, guys. I don't know how to get the torque converter bolts out. All right, stay tuned. How's my hair looking, y'all? Looking good. Got a little grease on me. So I had to ask Christopher. Christopher's done the torque converters on there. He's um, put bigger torque converters in these cars before. And he said you have to take the starter out and go through the starter hole. So there you go. That's what we're going to do. Thanks, Chris. All right. Austin's got the starter out. And then he took that little plastic cover piece off there. And then... uh. That exposes it good. Now I'm gonna turn the motor over from the front of the crank here. What size is that, you remember? Yep. <laughs> but I'm gonna turn it over. Where's the potato? Off of there until he can see a bolt in that hole. That's a and there's three bolts. That's bad. Well, there's three bolts usually in a torque converter. Sorry, crank bolts are 22 millimeter. I was way off. These torque converter bolts and some of them transmission bolts, man, it took a breaker bar to get them off. 
We're on the second torque converter bolt. Got it out already? No, I'm trying to find the electrical. Little, little bitty things. <laughs> but yeah, we're getting her. Keep we already swapped one transmission. We about got this one out. I knew this one was going to be harder. Just because of this third bolt up on this side, there's a nightmare to get to because it's right up against the body of the car. It's even worse to get to on an LT1 because the bolt head's bigger. Um, like the bolt head on an LT1, it's a 916th. On these, it's a 13 millimeter, so that gives you a little bit more room. But that third bolt up on the driver's side, it, it's hard to get to. And these bolts, man, they're all stuck. I mean, I don't think the transmission's ever been out of this car. Bad Yep, and this is aluminum, so... Bolts like to stick in aluminum for some reason. But these aren't aluminum down here. <laughs> these are tight. I'm having to hold it up here and he's having to use a breaker bar to get them loose. Well, there we go. It's out. And we made a freaking mess. <laughs> we couldn't get the dipstick tube out, man, because it's so tight in there. So... We just dropped the transmission when the dipstick tube came out, man. It went everywhere. And look at that. That dowel pin. Oh, I'll see you oh, that. That. <clears throat> that dowel pin. It was stuck in the transmission. It come out. It pulled right out of the motor. I had to get a pry bar in there to pry it apart. We'll have to knock that back out and put it back in the motor. The other one stayed in the motor like it's supposed to. But yeah. I tell you what, working on these fourth gens is not easy, man. That Trans Ammo there, it's easier to work on the motor. It's easier to take transmission out of. It's just easier. This job kind of sucks. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to get all this dried up, cleaned up, and get this transmission out of the way. Slide this other one over here and put it in. And then on this transmission on the driver's side, we're going to use two of the side bolts. The one up here, we're not going to use the top bolt. And then we're going to use the side bolts, and we're not going to use the bottom bolt. So we're going to use five bolts. But um, we got to get the trans. We got to get the torque converter in that one. When you stab the torque converter, make sure you spin and twist and spin and twist until that thing goes back three clicks. It should go back three clicks. Did you get it all over you? Not too bad, but a little bit. <laughs> so I wasn't sure if this transmission fittings were going to fit the Turbo 350, his push lock ones. But they fit. We'll have to do some transmission line bending a little bit to get them to go in there because they're mowing down at an angle, whereas this transmission may come straight out the side. So we'll have to do some bending and maneuvering, but that'll work. Modified. And then his uh, seal for the dipstick fit. So he's going to need a, uh, what do we need? We need torque converter bolts, a dipstick, and a drive shaft. Hopefully Christopher's drive shaft might work. We're going to have to see. Uh, I got the flex plate on there. And I got this adapter to work with a Turbo 350. I just took a piece of wood, laid on there, and hammered it up on there. And that's what it looks like. Slides it up, and then it gets to flush. There she is. Here's Austin stabbing a converter. Trying to take it when you put it on sometimes the first click it'll go straight on it but then you want it to go back two clicks or three clicks total unless yours just hits the first click when you stick it up there but there it is. There it is. when you get it on there the the bolt part should be about an inch inch and an eighth past the the front of the um of the where the bell housing bolts to the transmission so You just gotta push and wobble and pull in and out and push and That's it until you get it all the way on there. And you gotta make sure you get it all the way on there because if 
you don't, it'll burn your pump up. Number one, number two, when you go put your transmission up there, it, your, your torque converter will liable to hit your flex Where's plate before before your bell housing hits the motor. So Austin thought he was all the way in. He took a measurement and we're at like three quarters of an inch. So yeah, it's not close. There it is. Oh, there went another click. Did you hear that? So you want to hear it do that three times, but now sometimes when you first throw it up there, it'll it'll go straight on the first click. Then you got to do two clicks. But yeah, that's it. I'll tell you one inch. So it'll be about an inch, inch and an eighth back behind, you know, the flat part where his hand's at. And to the, to where the bolt is in the torque converter. But yeah, I think he's got it now. Now we can put this up under there and stab it. Oh yeah, and we cut the ears off of it. Both sides. All right, the turbo 350's in. We use that board under the pan and just use the floor jack. And it was a little hard. These got a smaller pan on them. Turbo 400 with a pan sticker, it makes it a little easier to roll on its side slide the transmission and the uh, piece of wood underneath of it and then roll it up on there but where these got a shallower pan it makes it a little harder so we wrestled it up on there and then uh, Austin held it and I jacked it up and we maneuvered it until the dowel pins lined up you got some dowel pins in between the bottom and top bolts you gotta line those up and if you push the transmission up on the dowel pins and then uh, get your bolts started. You're good to go. Let's see, that's the dowel pin right there. In the middle, the bolt at the top and bottom. So this side only gets two. His side get three, and that third one up, it is a, it's, it's a, it's pain because it's right up against the body of the car. But uh, he's using some really long extensions and a swivel to tighten those up and then uh, we're going to need to get some shorter torque converter bolts and uh, then we can put the torque converter in we got a Yumi or however you say it UMI Turbo 350 cross member that has the um, that has the uh, um, torque arm mount on the cross member itself and then we're going to have to drill holes for his shifter linkage to get it to line up but we are going to use the the stock shifter you just have to use oh i can't the, the the lever that comes off the transmission you'll have to take that off the seven off your uh, 4l60e that light's blinding us so you can't see it he's still got it on there what the the shifter linkage oh. for the shifter but yeah that's it man uh, well, uh, we're gonna call it quits for the day. We, I've been out here since 8 a.m. He's been out here since 9 a.m. and it's almost five o'clock. But we did, we did, we did. Uh, his wife and son came over with him, and we did take them home. That's like an hour round trip over there and back. But um. Pretty much it. Um, put the cross member in. We'll have to straighten these lines up and put them in the push connectors. Oh, they're way up here. See how much it's going to have to be. Which I got some brake line bender tools. That, that'll bend that transmission line just fine. Just got to be careful not to kink it. We'll line that up and stick those back in the hole there and uh, put the cross. Um, and then we'll put the torque arm on the, okay. actually, I don't know, we have to put the torque arm on the cross member. And then we're going to have to figure out a drive shaft. But uh, that's pretty much it. We'll end this video here. Y'all have a good one.